Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to gloomy January in England, specifically London where I'm based. Yeah, so I'm actually starting this vlog on a Friday and even though it is like a weekly vlog, this has just been such a chill, cozy, nesting style week. I have just been cozied up on my sofa enjoying like the evenings with the Christmas tree on. Yes, I keep my Christmas tree up through the end of January. I know some people think it's bad luck, but I joke that it's my equivalent of a sad lamp because it is just so cold and gloomy in London in January. And having the wonderful furry blanket and the Christmas tree just lifts my spirits. So I've been watching a little bit of TV in the evenings enjoying my Christmas tree and also just getting a ton of work done. My new planner actually arrived in the mail, I think at the end of last week. And I mean, look at this thing. <laughs> so I've been doing a lot of goal setting and just working on productivity because I don't know about you, but sometimes I just feel like it's this time in the day, what the heck have I gotten done? So I'm trying to write everything down do a bit of time tracking. I know you can do apps to do time tracking and I have used those before and really enjoyed those, but there's something for me just about writing tasks down and crossing them off that just feels so good. So I've been doing a lot of work here. This planner is by the Inspired Stories Company and I can leave a link to it down below, but it's really good as you can see, it's super thick. And um, if we just open up to a random day, Monday, June 17th, um, I don't know how well you can see here with my lighting, but it just has like one whole page for every day. And it's a lot of like time to like on this side, you can actually fill in your whole schedule. So I've been actually doing time blocking here. So what I actually do, um, and then you can put your top three priorities of the day and then your other tasks down here, notes for the day. And then what's nice is there's a morning intention at the top and the best thing about today in the bottom. So I just find this really keeps me organized and they do have digital versions of these planners, but I just, I love the old school, write it down, cross it off, see what you actually get done in a day. So that's been kind of the net net of the week. Um, but yeah, so now um, I am gonna go make some lunch. I'm still working right now. It's almost two o'clock, but I thought I would um, share with you a really kind of nice and healthy work from home lunch. And then I also do have some really lovely fun things in London planned for this weekend. So I thought that would be what you see in this video. So if that sounds good, let's jump in. Ooh. So breaking news, um, before I go make lunch, the door just rang and inside of the package is this wonderful parcel from Garnier. So this is kindly gifted to me. They actually reached out to see if they could send me something because on my blog, The Savvy Bostonian, I um, was referencing some Garnier products in my Christmas gift guides and um, they have some exciting new launches for January and I just love beauty and skincare and I actually really do like Garnier products. I like their sheet masks and I use their micellar cleanser every single day. That is my, the sensitive skin one is my go-to. So I, of course, curious to try some more. So I'm just gonna open this up. It feels so bad like tearing it apart because I used to work in PR and I know how much goes into these packages. Um, but yeah, it's got box here. And then, ooh, wow, okay. So they are celebrating over 100 years of Garnier, which is really cool. And in the box, I've got, ooh, I'll show you. Do you wanna see what it looks like? Dun, da, 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 here is what is in the box. So it comes with a nice information on the products, but it's 100, over 100 years of Garnier. We've got the goodies down below, but the, I know what's inside. We've got 
two different types of cleansers. So um, let's take a look. So there are two new cleansers coming out. They've given me the Soothing Hyaluronic Aloe Cream Cleanser. Wow, this sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me being such a pro at unboxing. Um, and basically what it says is that it gently cleanses, hydrates, and soothes. And it also protects your skin barrier with a pH neutral to skin. And it's also microbiome friendly and dermatologically tested. That looks incredible. I love the top as well. I'm definitely going to try this out and let you know what I think. And then, so there are two different ones. So you can either have the soothing or there's also a brightening cream cleanser with vitamin C as well, which also sounds fantastic. But let's see what else is in here. So they have also given me, ooh, a vitamin C daily UV SPF 50 plus sunscreen. Wow. Um, I wear SPF 50 every single day because I have super fair skin and I have some hyperpigmentation. So I am super excited to try this. Let's take a look and here's a little bit more of a look of what it looks like. That looks fantastic. So a sheer glow, there's a glowing version. That's like a tinted one as well as an invisible one. And they've given me the invisible one. So a really big thank you to Garnier. It felt like another Christmas present arriving in the mail and I'm really excited to try the products and I will circle back between my weekly vlogs as well as my monthly skincare empties where I really get in deep and tell you which products I'm using up, if I like them, if I don't like them, all the good stuff. So now time to make lunch. All right, so today I'm gonna make a really nice chopped salad with chicken. So I'm starting with a chicken breast. So what I do is I just take a little extra virgin olive oil on a spoon and I brush it over kind of the raw chicken just to give it a little bit of a crust. Then I just dust over the chicken with some salt freshly ground black pepper and garlic. And because you kind of coated the top with the extra virgin olive oil, it sticks really nicely. And then we're gonna pop it here in the oven on 240 degrees Celsius on the grill setting for about 15 minutes. So I start by chopping up a bunch of sweet gem lettuce. It comes like this. And that's what it looks. I just fill up kind of a, like a medium, small sized plate, whichever plate you want your portion for, for your salad. Then I will sprinkle on some chopped toasted hazelnuts. I already buy it already done because it's delicious and easy. Here's what it looks like. I definitely am generous with my hazelnuts because it's delicious. Next up, I chop up whatever nice vegetables I have on hand, and I happen to have some radishes, some cucumber, and some carrots. So it's definitely coming together nicely, but we are not done yet. So just to add a bit of a punch of flavor to the salad, I've added a little bit of feta on top, and then I'm gonna add some freshly ground black pepper and wait for my chicken to finish cooking. So my chicken just came out of the oven and it looks really good. And now I'm just gonna slice it in half to make sure that it's fully cooked. And I'll probably use half of it on my salad, but obviously you can use whichever portion size works best for you. Here is the finished salad. And next I'm gonna top it with some dressings, which will include extra virgin olive oil, Nando's Perinés, and a little bit of spicy harissa tahini. So let's go. Okay, so here is really the finished salad and it looks so good. I'm starving, so buon appetito. And I hope you enjoyed this little recipe. If you would like me to write this up as a recipe for the Savvy Bostonian blog, please leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to share it with you when it's ready. 
Hey everyone, so on Friday, I had a really lovely evening. I met some friends at the Spaniards Inn, which is a historic British pub up in Hampstead Heath, and we just had such a lovely time. Um, this pub is really fun to go to if you've been on Hampstead Heath for the day. I would say definitely check the transit links before you go because it's not the easiest pub to get to. Um, but if you're already on the Heath, it's very easy to get to. But yes, yeah, so we had booked a table and we had a, I started with this orange blossom and hibiscus spritz, which was like a mix of gin, prosecco, and this orange blossom, I think in raspberry soda with um, hibiscus and dried orange. It was fantastic. And then for my meal, I just decided to splurge and get a bacon cheeseburger with truffle french fries. Oh my gosh, I think I'm still full and it's like midday the next day, but it was really good. And then in addition to just catching up with lovely friends, we also played some card games um, and some board games as well. So a very wholesome evening, which was just lovely. So definitely recommend the pub, great food, great atmosphere, and yeah, just very chill. So today is Saturday and it is gloomy and cold out, but I am determined to make the most of the day and to do something interesting. So what I've decided to do, I wanna go check out St. Dunstan in the East, which is the ruins of a grade one church. It's supposed to be really beautiful. And I thought since it's kind of eerie and gloomy, it might just add to the atmosphere. Um, and then I'm trying to decide after if I just wanna go for a walk along the Thames or go to St. Paul's Cathedral. So depending on the title of this video, you'll probably know what I ended up doing. But yeah, let's go have a really fun and interesting day in London. So I started my day at St. Dunstan in the East Church Garden. And what I love about it is when you're in the city of London, you feel the mix of old and new. Like you can see the shard with kind of the buildings mixed in. And to get to St. Dunstan in the East, I just walked through kind of what felt like a series of alleys, almost feeling like I'm stepping back in time. And the church itself was built around 1100. And unfortunately, the church was severely damaged during the Great Fire of London in 1666. And then, as if that wasn't enough, it was actually severely damaged again when it was bombed during the Blitz in 1941 although both the tower and the steeple did survive. So it, you can go visit it today, but you can't actually go inside. And basically what happened is the city of London decided not to rebuild the church after World War II, but in 1970, it reopened as a public garden, which is what you can see me exploring here now. And unfortunately, they were doing a little bit of construction on it when, when I arrived, but it's completely free to visit. And you can see kind of the mix of plants and ruins, and it just, it's really, really beautiful. It's open from 8 a.m. until 7 p.m. or dusk daily, so obviously it would close earlier in the winter. And um, obviously just keep an eye on holiday occasions. Like I know it's closed on, I think Christmas day and Boxing Day. So just be mindful of kind of special holiday occasions. And something I didn't realize, but I read on the sign there is the garden can actually be hired out for commercial photo or video shoots or events. How cool would that be? Obviously it would be an outdoor kind of event, but very interesting. And I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I wouldn't recommend that you need to factor in a lot of time to spend here, but it's really beautiful just to stroll around, look at the ruins, appreciate this part of London's history and take some really lovely photos. After a lovely visit to St. Dunstan in the East, I felt like I had a bit more energy in me to A, take a lovely walk along the Thames path to St. Paul's Cathedral. And basically, if you, when you finish St. Dunstan in the east, if you head out on the other side, heading toward the Thames River, just open up Google Maps on your phone, look at where the Thames River is, you can just pop right onto the Thames path. And the Thames Path is actually something really, really special in the UK. 
in London, there's many stretches of it both, both on the North Bank and the South Bank that you can walk through so many iconic London landmarks. Like you saw here, when I first popped on, I saw the famous Tower Bridge, a bit of the Shard. You go through many of London's famous bridges. It's a really great day and just if you love a long walk, there's so many great stretches of this. You can just take a look on Google Maps, enter the Thames Path, and just enjoy and stop for coffees, drinks, a lunch, all those kind of things. So it was probably about like a 15 to 20 minute walk between St. Dunstan in the East and St. Paul's Cathedral. And there's some really lovely sights on this side. Um, as I mentioned, um, Tower Bridge, the Shard, London Bridge, which everyone thinks London Bridge is Tower Bridge, but it's actually um, the less exciting looking one, I guess, but still rather famous. And it just makes for a nice day and a nice walk, stretch those legs. And um, I think South Bank on the other side of the river gets a bit more love because there's a bit more action. But I do like how on this North Bank side that you can just enjoy maybe a bit less crowds, but some really beautiful scenic vistas. And just a bit on the Thames Path in general, the Thames Path is over 185 miles, it really stretches into the suburbs, out to the Cotswolds. So there's also a lot of countryside walks you can do as well, which I'll leave a link down below. I have not done any of those yet, but that would definitely be something on my list to check out in the future. the famous Millennium Bridge, which is a pedestrian only bridge, I knew I had to turn off of the Thames Path and over to St. Paul's Cathedral. However, if you didn't want to go to St. Paul's Cathedral and you wanted to do something different, this would be a good place to cross over to the famous South Bank side of the Thames Path. You could either go to the Tate Modern Museum, which is a really great free modern art museum, if you turn left and cross over the bridge, or if you turn right, you can go over to St. Paul's Cathedral, which is what I decided to do because I realized that I have lived in London for nine years now, and I still have never been to St. Paul's Cathedral. Now, I'm not a very religious person. I was raised Catholic, and something that I do love to do, which viewers who have followed me on this channel for a while will realize is I do love to look at the architecture and the historical significance of old cathedrals when I'm traveling around Europe. And I realized I have never done this in London. So I thought today is the day. Now there was a little bit of a line, or as we would say, a queue to get in. And the ticket price um, as of January, 2024, when I went on my visit was 25 pounds for an adult. And you might be thinking, wow, that's a lot of money. Well, apparently it costs 7 million pounds to maintain the cathedral every year. So that is why they charge this type of admission price. And to be fair, I actually think it's really worth it after my visit. There is so much to see and experience in the cathedral. It is stunningly beautiful. And um, let me share with you a little bit about what I experienced in there. So when you come in, you see kind of the grand part of the cathedral, which is wonderful. But there's also a lower level as well as you can climb 500 plus steps up to the dome area and there's also a roof terrace as well so you could really spend quite a few hours here and i even got to hear one of the priests giving a sermon and then i ended up talking to him after as well which is um kind of happened by accident just because I was um, standing to the side listening to some of the organ music playing and he stood next to me and then um, I just thanked him for his sermon and we started chatting a bit and he was just 
absolutely lovely asking me where I'm from and uh, once he heard that I love to visit cathedrals he was giving me his list of all the places he thought were really special so you just never know who you'll meet when you're traveling but a couple little facts on St. Paul's Cathedral so this is an incredibly historic cathedral and it actually in theory dates all the way back to 604 which is when St. Paul's is thought to have been consecrated but to be fair many of the early foundations of the church were destroyed in various conflicts and fires and basically I don't think they know where the original site of St. Paul's was so the one that you will see today in London was developed much much later so really um i think they thought from like the 1500s on that this was the site of the cathedral and please correct me if my research is wrong there but what happened is in 1666 there was the great fire of london we just spoke about that with saint dunstan in the east and that's when the church completely burned down and had to be re-architected to what you see today. So just a quick pause on the history now because I had a little sneaky clip of me climbing up to the top. And these are some of the views that you can see from the top of St. Paul's Cathedral. It is a lot of steps, so if you're not in great health, if you're not great at climbing stairs, I am really good at climbing stairs. I climb the stairs in the tube, even the really eye-wateringly high escalators. I find most of the human population cannot climb stairs very well. So you might wanna do a little bit of practice and training if this is something you really wanna go see. Get on that Stairmaster at the gym. Um, I took them two at a time because they're very shallow steps, but even I was quite <laughs> winded and tired by the end. Um, but you do get a little bit of a rest point when you go see the dome area. And I was unfortunately not allowed to film up there because apparently someone dropped their phone down from the dome all the way into the center of the cathedral. Thank goodness no one was hurt. But now they won't even let you pull your phone out of your pocket up there. They are so strict about it because honestly dropping a phone from that height if it lands on someone's head could really really hurt them but you can take your phone out or your camera out and film up from the rooftop and you get to see so many of the iconic buildings of London and I went a little bit around that golden hour time of day and it was so worth it so then I climbed all the way back down um, to enjoy a little bit more so when you walk in you have kind of that great iconic hall with all the pews but there are also so many other nooks of that ground floor that you can explore and it's just really stunning. There's beautiful sculptures, stained glass, so many different areas to enjoy. And then you also can go downstairs to another level. Um, and there, there's actually a really great exhibition about Christopher Wren. Now, after the Great Fire of London, Christopher Wren, who's an architect, was the one who won the bid to redesign St. Paul's Cathedral and this was a huge deal um, for his career and I thought that the exhibition inside the church was really really good about Sir Christopher Wren how he got to you know won the project his vision for the project and um, that's what I really liked about the visit and why I would recommend visiting as a great idea because if you enjoy, if you're religious and you love um, seeing historic churches, then you're going to want to go to St. Paul's Cathedral just for that. And you'll probably also want to go on the website and see if you can join a mass as well. If you're maybe not as religious, but you love architecture and history, then there's so much to offer in terms of that. I think um, the church itself has many signs throughout just to let you immerse yourself in that and especially the exhibition on Sir Christopher Wren and how he you know the the undertaking they had to do after the Great Fire of London was really really impressive and then also seeing some of the historical bits about how the church survived World War II and all the things that kind of this church has lived through in London's history is just so impressive so I'm really happy I went 
and I would definitely recommend it. But if you have any questions at all, I'm gonna make sure I leave a link to the church's website down below, which will have all the admission prices, times, all the details, because obviously there's discounted tickets for seniors, for children, for groups, for all the things that, you know, these videos live on the internet for a lot longer and I wanna make sure you get all the latest information and the best thing to do is do a little bit of research on your own as well. So rounding out the video, I wrapped up my weekend in London with a wonderful visit to one of my favorite restaurants, which is an Italian restaurant called Daphne's, kind of on the South Kensington Chelsea border. It is a London institution. I had this really incredible, I think it was like butternut squash or pumpkin uh, tortellini with sage brown butter chef's kiss so good we were there to celebrate the birthday of a friend of mine and i've been so many times before but if you're looking for a great more upscale italian restaurant with a bit of a buzz and a vibe to it i really recommend it and i actually one of the hacks i love if it's just two of you you can actually reserve seats at the bar um, either by calling them or visiting the website I actually really love sitting at the bar because the bartenders are great and it's interactive. So definitely one of my London insider tips. But I really hope you enjoyed this video, seeing a little bit of my life in London. And if you did like this video, please hit that like button. That really helps me know that you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the video. I always love hearing from you. And I would love it if you considered subscribing. Most of the people who actually watch my videos don't subscribe and it would mean the world to me if you subscribed and joined me on this wonderful YouTube journey. It's completely free. So thanks again for tuning in and I will see you soon.